Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4 which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day which states that today is a rare opportunity to create a better tomorrow for yourself. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are defining a few terms. One is called the threshold frequency which is denoted by F0. Then two, we have what we call the work function, denoted by W0. And lastly, we have what we call the electron volt. So what is this that we are calling the threshold frequency? Remember the word threshold simply means the minimum requirement uh, for you to do or to achieve uh, something. Therefore, when we talk of threshold frequency, we are simply talking of the minimum frequency of the incident radiation uh, that will cause emission of electron from a metal surface. Remember, the incident radiation, in most cases, we usually use ultraviolet uh, radiation. So the minimum frequency of the incident radiation or of the incident ultraviolet radiation that will cause emission of an electron from a metal surface, that is what we are calling the threshold frequency. So that simply means that if the incident radiation, for example, ultraviolet uh, radiation, if it does not have a certain uh, minimum a requirement of frequency, then such a radiation will not cause emission of electrons. So in order for electrons to be emitted, there must be some certain uh, threshold or minimum frequency that an incident radiation must possess in order for it to cause uh, emission of electrons from a metal surface. So if the frequency of the incident radiation uh, uh, or of the radiation falling on the metal surface is lower than the threshold frequency, then no electrons will be emitted from the metal surface. Or simply put, no photoelectric emission will take place. So for example, if um, the threshold frequency of a certain metal surface maybe is uh, 20 Hz, so that simply means that the incident radiation, that is the ultraviolet radiation, must have a frequency either equal to 20 Hz or more than 20 Hz in order for it to cause emission of electron from such a metal surface. Otherwise, if the uh, frequency of the incident radiation is lower than the threshold frequency or is lower than maybe the 20 Hz, then in that particular case, no photoelectric emission is going to take place. So if the frequency of the radiation falling on the metal surface or if the frequency of the incident radiation is lower than the threshold frequency, then no electrons will be emitted from the metal surface or no photoelectric emission is going to take place. So similarly, uh, the wavelength corresponding to the threshold frequency is known as the threshold wavelength denoted by uh, lambda naught, the lambda naught. So we can define threshold wavelength as the minimum wavelength of the incident radiation that would cause emission of electrons from a metal surface. So again, if the wavelength of the incident radiation is uh, maybe lower than uh, the threshold wavelength, then we don't expect any uh, photoelectric emission to take place. So photoelectric emission can only take place if the incident radiation has a frequency equal to or greater than the threshold frequency. Similarly, photoelectric emission can only take place if the incident radiation has a wavelength which is equal to or greater than the threshold wavelength. Then we look at what we call the work function. So work function is simply defined as the amount of energy required to eject an electron from the uh, surface of a metal. Remember, we know that energy is equal to HF, and we know that uh, frequency there's a, from the formula V is equal to uh, F lambda, there is a relationship between the energy, the frequency, and of course the uh, wavelength. Therefore, the work function is simply the energy which is uh, corresponding to the uh, threshold wavelength and also the threshold frequency. So uh, the work function is simply the amount of energy required to eject an electron from the uh, surface of the metal. So there is some certain minimum amount of energy that the incident radiation must possess in order for it to cause photoelectric emission. Otherwise, if that energy is lower than what we are calling the work function of the metal uh, where we want to eject the electron from, then no electron is going to be ejected from that particular uh, metal surface. So 
if the energy of the radiation or if the energy of the incident radiation, for example, the ultraviolet radiation uh, falling on the metal surface is lower than the work function of the metal, then in such a case, no electron will be emitted from the metal surface. So electron can only be emitted if the energy of the incident radiation, for example, the ultraviolet light, is either equal to or greater than the work function of the metal where you want to uh, eject or emit an electron from. Then a uh, work function is equivalent to uh, the photon energy. Remember, a photon is simply one particle of uh, light. You'll understand more about a uh, photon energy or uh, uh, a photon when you'll be covering what we call the uh, quantum uh, physics. So work function is simply equivalent to uh, the photon energy at threshold frequency. Therefore, the work function, which is W0, is equals to HF0. Or simply put, work function will be equal to uh, the Planck's constant H multiplied by the threshold frequency. But we know that V is equals to F lambda. Therefore, you can also derive uh, a relationship between the work function and, of course, the uh, that is the threshold uh, wavelength, as we shall see in our examples. Of course, where H represents the Planck's constant in joules per second. Then uh, uh, let's define what we call the electron volt, denoted by EV. So EV is simply an abbreviation for electron volt. So electron volt is simply the energy gained by an electron when it moves through a potential difference of one volt. So the energy gained by uh, a single electron when it moves through a potential difference of only one volt, that is what we are calling an electron volt. Therefore, an electron volt has a charge of usually a 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb. Therefore, one electron volt will, will be equal to uh, the charge of that particular electron multiplied by, uh, that is, uh, the potential difference. So one electron volt is equal to uh, the charge of one electron, which is usually 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb, multiplied by uh, the potential difference, which is of one volt. So if you take 1.6 times 10 power negative 6 coulomb multiplied by 1 volt, you are going to get that 1 electron volt is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joule. So this relationship will be very important in calculations, that 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joule. So you can use this relationship to convert energy maybe uh, from different units, as we shall see in our following examples. Next, we look at our first example, which reads that an electron is ejected from the surface of a metal with a kinetic energy of 2.24 times 10 power negative 19 joules. What is the energy of the electron in electron volts? So we are given the kinetic energy of the ejected electron in joules, which is 2.24 times 10 power negative 19 joules. So, but we have just established that one electron volt is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules. So what about the 2.24 times 10 power negative 19 joules? So this will be over 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules multiplied by one electron volt, which is the same as saying 2.24 divided by 1.6, then multiplied by, we combine the numbers uh, which have the same base, so times 10 power negative 19. So remember from the loss of indices, whenever you divide, you have to subtract the power. So negative 19 minus minus 19. So 2.24 divided by 1.6, you'll get 1.4. Then negative 19 minus minus 19 minus minus will give you a plus. So this is the same as saying negative 19 plus 19, which will give you 0. So we'll have 1.4 multiplied by 10 power 0. Then remember that a number power 0 is 1. So 10 power 0 is the same as 1. So this is 1.4 multiplied by 1, which will give you 1.4 electron volts. Then part B, we are told that light of frequency 5.7 times 10 power 14 has is irradiated on a surface of a metal whose work function is 2.6 electron volt. Explain whether photoelectric emission will take place. So this one is testing you on the conditions uh, uh, of photoelectric emission taking place. So we said that in order for photoelectric emission to take place, one, that the frequency of the incident radiation must be equal to or greater than uh, the threshold frequency. Alternatively, we said that uh, the energy of the incident radiation must be equal to or greater than the work function 
uh, of the metal where you want to eject that particular electron. So because I'm given the uh, frequency of the incident radiation, in this case, which is the light, I'm going to use the work function of this particular metal to find the uh, threshold frequency of that particular uh, metal so that I can compare it with uh, the frequency of the incident radiation, which is light uh, of 5.7 times 10 power 14 half. So I'm going to use the formula for work function, which is equals to uh, the Planck's constant multiplied by threshold frequency. If I divide both sides by H, I'm going to get uh, the threshold frequency being equal to work function divided by uh, the threshold, that is the Planck's constant H. So the work function of the metal I'm given as 2.6 electron volt, then divided by the Planck's constant is 6.63 uh, times 10 power negative 34 joule second. So because uh, the Planck's constant is in joule second, it cannot uh, rhyme with electron volt. So we'll be forced to convert uh, the work function into joules uh, so that it rhymes with our Planck's constant. So uh, we know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules. What about the 2.6 electron volt? So that will be 2.6 electron volt divided by one electron volt multiplied by 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 joules. So this one is simply to convert uh, the electron volts into joules so that we can divide it with uh, the Planck's constant which is in joules second. So this one is already now converted into uh, joules. So we have 2.6 multiplied by 1.6 divided by 6.63 as shown in the first bracket. Then because these ones are, uh, are, are sharing a common base, I'm simply going to apply the loss of indices. That if the bases are the same, if you divide, then you have to subtract the powers. So this is the same as saying times 10 power negative 19, then minus because of the division negative 34. So negative 19 minus minus 34. So if you compute 2.6 times 1.6 divided by 6.63 on your calculator, you are going to get uh, 0 0.62745. Then of course, negative 19 minus minus 34 minus multiplied by minus, you'll get a plus. So this is the same as saying negative 19 plus a positive 34. So this will give you 0 0.62745 multiplied by negative 19 plus 34, you'll get positive 15. So if you put this on your calculator, 0 0.62745 multiplied times 10 power 15, you'll get your answer in standard form as 6.2745 times 10 power 14 half. So this is what we are calling the threshold frequency. So you can see the threshold frequency is far much greater than uh, the frequency of the incident radiation. So that simply means that in this case, no photoelectric emission is going to take place. So photoelectric emission can only take place if the frequency of the incident radiation is either equal to uh, the threshold frequency or it is greater than the threshold frequency. So because a light, uh, which is our incident radiation, uh, has a frequency of 5.7 times 10 power 14 half, which is far much less than uh, the threshold frequency of this particular uh, metal, which is a 6.2745 times 10 power 14 half, it simply means that no electron is going to be ejected from this metal surface. So an electron can only be ejected from this surface if the incident frequency, if the incident uh, radiation has a frequency of either 6.2745 times 10 power 14 half or a frequency which is greater than 6.745 times 10 power 14 half. So the conclusion is that photoelectric emission will not take place or no electrons are going to be ejected because the frequency of light, which is the incident radiation, which has a frequency of 5.7 times 10 power 14 half, is lower than the threshold frequency of the metal, which is about 6.3 times 10 power uh, 14 half. So photoelectric emission will only take place if the frequency of the incident radiation is greater than the threshold frequency. Remember, in some questions, you'll be given, you'll be required to compare the work functions. Huh? So uh, you just check the energy of the incident radiation. If the energy of the incident radiation is greater than or equal to the work function, photoelectric emission will, is going to take place. But if the energy of the incident radiation is lower than the work function, then in that case, no photoelectric emission is going to take place. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend that you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concepts that we have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where 
possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that today is a rare opportunity to create a better tomorrow for yourself. So the quote is encouraging us to dedicate each second and each minute of our day to self-growth because that is the only way we can lay a good foundation for our future success. Remember, every action, every decision that you make today is either positively or negatively contributing to your future success. So make sure that your actions are the ones that can earn you an interest over uh, a longer period of time. Remember that the quality of life you will live tomorrow will be determined by the quality of decisions and the quality of work that you put in today. And lastly, recall that every minute you spend thinking about what somebody else has already achieved is taking away 60 seconds that you could have used to create something great for yourself. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.